Yo, what's going on, guys? Today, we are going to be going over what I believe to be the number one misinterpreted verse in the Bible. And there's this like stigma around being Christians that you have to be poor to get into heaven. And I think it comes from this verse. So I'm going to be breaking down this verse and what it actually means. Uh, but today, I'm going to be going over an email that I sent out to my email list not too long ago. I send about four to five emails a week just breaking down biblical stories and principles that I'm currently studying uh, completely free. So if you want to subscribe to that, I'm going to put a link below and I'll also send you a uh, free devotional as well to hopefully help you grow in your faith. But let's dive into this verse today. So the verse says this, and I'm sure you've heard it before, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. And that verse is Mark 10, 25. So, at face value, you know, this verse is saying it's impossible for a rich person to get into heaven. I agree, but the problem is we're taking it at face value with zero context. Anytime you are reading the Bible, always get the context. It becomes easier when you understand the stories and you understand the characters. Like getting context becomes easier as you continue to grow um, in your understanding and knowledge of the Bible. It's something I'm working really hard to try to understand and everything I read is the context. Who are these people? What did the time look like when they were you know, living? Like what, what was the time? So try to get context. What are the verses around this verse tell us? Um, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. So if you want the full story from the Bible, you can pause your screen and read that right there. I got all the scripture that's going to tell us everything we need to know. Um, I'm not going to read it, but I'm going to give you guys just a summary of what it says. So essentially, this rich man comes to Jesus and he's like, hey, how do I get into heaven? And so Jesus rattles off some commandments, right? And the guy's like, you know, I'm, I'm good on those. I've, I've done all that. I've checked all those boxes. So Jesus then knows that this guy is wealthy. And he says, give up all your wealth to the poor and come follow me. And the answer, the response that this man gives tells us everything we need to know. Verse 22 right here. At this, at this, the man's face fell and he went away sad for he had many possessions. That is everything that this, that is the context. That is what this is truly about right there. So read that again. At this man's face fell. At this, the man's face fell. He went away sad for he had many possessions. So it wasn't the fact that this man was wealthy at all. It was the fact that his wealth was above following Jesus. His wealth was above God. And Jesus tells us that in verse 27 down here. He says, humanly speaking, it is impossible to get into heaven, he's saying, but not with God. Everything is possible with God. But if wealth is above God, you are not with God. Does that make sense? So this man had his wealth above God, so he can't get into heaven because he's not with God, because it's only possible to get into heaven with God by following Jesus. And this guy chose his wealth above following Jesus. So that is what this is all about. That's what this verse is all about, is putting our wealth above God makes it impossible to get into heaven. And it's not about being rich at all. I do think there is some validity to the fact that Jesus knew that Wealth would be the easiest thing to replace him. Materials and wealth in this world, I would say, are the number one thing that replaces God. Does that make sense? It becomes a lowercase g God in our world, in our minds. We chase this status. We chase this bank account. Chase these cars. Chase this career, this promotion, whatever. We pursue these things above God. We are willing, not willing to sacrifice. We're not willing to give away money to donate to tie to the church, whatever it is, we are so white knuckling our wealth, holding on to our money so tightly. Um, and, and we put our money and our wealth above God. And I think Jesus knew that that was going to be the number one thing that would replace him in people's hearts. So it, let me just reframe this whole thing. Like it is not about the fact that rich people can't get into heaven. It's about the fact that anyone who puts anything above God, can't get into heaven. So I hope that this furthered your understanding and helped you to better understand what I believe is the mis number one misinterpreted verse in the Bible. Um, and I hope that this makes you want to pursue God, put him first, um, and then wealth will come um, following that, doing that. If you put God first, wealth will come. God wants his, his children, his, his followers to be wealthy. 
Um, I will die on that hill. I will argue on that hill. Um, and actually on my YouTube channel, my Raw Faith podcast, I'm going to be bringing on Money Mitch. and We're going to be talking about what the Bible actually says about money in a series here. So be sure to go check out the YouTube, subscribe to that. But if you want to receive these emails as well, links below to subscribe. I send out four to five a week, completely free, and you'll get a devotional. So peace.